Hello and welcome back to the building of the Ben Buckle Falcon. It's getting to an ex exciting stage now. I'm about to begin the last part of the covering process and as you can see that's going to involve covering the wings. So I'll take you through what I'm going to do. Uh, we'll do some time-lapse photography uh, because it's quite a laborious process and then we'll see what it looks like as a finished product. The wings have been prepped and by prepped they've been sanded down and then I've applied two coats of Mod Podge. This has gone a long way, it's not cheap stuff, it's not mega expensive either, but I've covered two big models using this and there's still about a fifth left in the bottom of the container. Two coats, let it dry, sand it down in between each coat. The reason for that is it's a water-based product. It tends to lift the grain slightly. It acts a little bit like a sand and sealer. And you can leave that for any amount of time after it's dried. It doesn't make any difference. Because what we are going to do is it will reactivate with the application of heat. And then I'll be covering it in a conventional way with a heat shrink covering. Um, tack, pull, tack and repeat. And I'll take you through that process. I've also put Mod Podge on the ribs. Now I wouldn't norm normally do that. I would simply seal around the outer edge and then shrink the whole thing. Unless there was an under camber. There isn't an under camber on this wing. However... I find it much easier to control how the covering is pulled tight if I do it panel by panel. I know that some people have advocated shrinking the whole area because it's easier to take out stubborn creases in that way. However, my experience is that I can actually get a much tighter um, lockdown onto the frame before I heat the whole thing if I do individual panels. It may just be a peculiarity of the polyester covering. So let's get ready to rumble. I've got my scissors which are only used for cutting cloth in an attempt to keep them a little bit sharper for longer. I have the crimping shears which I have used um, to cut the cloth because uh, it stops the fraying, and that's a useful thing to have. Peaking shears, I think, is the correct term for them. And before I start, first thing I'm going to do is to put a new blade in this scalpel. The blade that I've taken out was plenty sharp enough for cutting balsa, but it'll go blunt very, very quickly, and it won't be anywhere near sharp enough for the way... I'm going to be cutting this cloth. So, let's get started. I hope you could see in that sequence that the covering's now been tacked down and I basically worked out from the centre. I still haven't actually stuck this down yet. I will work outwards with the iron, following the lines and pulling it. And that's part of the reason for leaving the surplus, pulling it as I go along and applying heat. So I'll carry on doing that and when it's all done I'll cut the edges and we'll seal them ready to flip it over and do the other side.
So we're totally sealed down now. All that remains to do is to trim off the excess. I'll cut it fairly neat because the top layer will fold over and I'll give about a quarter of an inch overlap onto the underside. But there you go, that's the first part of the process completed. Pleased with that. There we have it, that's the lower panel on. I've also ironed down the ribs. There is actually a slight under camber which I wasn't aware of until I've just looked very closely at it. I've cut the edge, trimmed it. Um, you get these irritating little fibres coming off and what I'm going to do now is seal these edges with full strength dope. Now I know I'm indoors, I know I'm in the dining area, but if you don't tell the wife I won't. Hopefully by the end of the day the smell will have gone. So I'm going to apply this all the way along the edge to just to doubly seal it. And then what I will do is I'll go over the about a quarter of an inch of the covering with Mod Podge. And the reason for that is when I'm putting the top layer on, I have found that the dope doesn't act as good as an, as an adhesive as the Mod Podge does. So this is just to seal the edge. When it's dry, I'll give it a very light rub down. Then I'll put Mod Podge on and then I'll put the top layer on. I don't want you to see the crime scene any longer than you have to. I don't want you implicated, so I'm going to pause it there. All sealed. I hope you, you didn't tell anybody our secret, okay? So, I'm going to have a coffee, have a break, let that dope go off, it doesn't take long. Seal the edge with some Mod Podge and then I'll do the upper wing panel. See you soon. Okay, second side's ready to do. Uh, let's crack on and get at least one wing panel done today. Well, here we go, here we go. That's one wing panel completed. Uh, I haven't applied any heat with the heat gun at this stage, but you can see, I hope, that it's a, a very taut covering, simply by pulling and stretching as it's put on. I've sealed around the edges with full strength dope again, don't tell anybody. Um, I'm going to leave it now. I think one wing a day is enough. Your back aches doing this sort of thing. Um, but I'm really pleased with that. I think it looks really cool. Another wing to go and then there's a blank canvas ready for some decoration. Thanks for watching. Hope you found that informative. Take care now.